Welcome back to this second video about two-way ANOVA. In this video, we will have a look at different types of two-way ANOVAs and discuss when and how to use them. At the end of this video, we will discuss type 1, 2 and 3 models. Depending on your XML for design, there are three possible types of two-way ANOVAs to select between. The first type is simply called a two-way ANOVA or between-between ANOVA. The second type is called mixed ANOVA or within between ANOVA. And the third type is called within within ANOVA. A within within ANOVA is also called a repeated meshes two way ANOVA or within within subjects ANOVA. Before we look into the differences between these types of ANOVAs, let's first recall the difference between a repeated and an independent meshes design. A repeated meshes design involves multiple measurements of the same variable on the same or matched individuals. For example, let's say that we measure the tumor size on three different subjects before the treatment. We then measure the tumor size again on the same three subjects after two weeks, and then again after four weeks. We have then collected multiple measurements of the same variable, the tumor size, on the same subjects. This is one example of a repeated meshes design. Similarly, we could measure the height of three different plants before a certain treatment, and then measure the height again of the same three plants after two weeks of treatment, and then again after four weeks of treatment. In both these examples, we use a repeated meshes design, and the use of a repeated meshes ANOVA seems to be appropriate to use in order to analyze the data. This is another example of repeated meshes design. In this example, we have taken a tumor from three different subjects and placed pieces of the tumor into three different culture plates. One plate is used as a control, whereas the two other plates are exposed to drug A or B. Since the tumor cells in the three different plates come from the same subject, this can be considered as a repeated meshes design. It makes sense to first compare the difference in tumor growth within each patient's material and then compare the within differences, rather than first calculate the means of the three subjects and then compare these mean values between the different treatments. In an independent meshes design, also called between subject design, each subject usually participates in only one of the groups and the variable is measured only one time on each subject. For example, in a clinical trial where one wants to test two new drugs for cancer and compare these to a traditional treatment, the control group, we cannot expose the subjects to all treatments. Therefore, we need unique subjects in each treatment group. If we use three subjects in each group, we would need in total nine independent individuals in our study. This study design requires more subjects to generate the same number of data points as in the repeated meshes design. Another example of an independent meshes design could involve that we expose three independent plants to cold temperature, three plants to warm temperature, and another three plants to hot temperature. We could then compare the growth of the plants in these three conditions over the same time frame. We would then need in total nine independent plants. An appropriate statistical test for these types of study designs could be a one-way ANOVA. When it comes to a two-way ANOVA, there are three types that can be used depending on our X mental design. For a two-way between between ANOVA, both factors should involve independent subjects. For example, let's say that we would like to compare tumor reduction between three different treatments. Six individuals are in the control group, which are on the traditional treatment. Six individuals try drug A, and another six individuals try drug B. We also want to test if men and women respond differently to the drugs. Each treatment group therefore includes six independent subjects with three women and three men. In total, 18 independent subjects are included in the study. We'll here study if there is a difference in tumor reduction between the groups and if there is an interaction between treatment and gender. 
Here is another example of a study design that may involve a between between ANOVA, where the growth of plants is examined after four weeks based on two types of treatments. For example, six independent plants are grown in cold temperatures, where three of these plants get the low amount of watering, and three plants get a high amount of watering. Another six plants are exposed to warm temperatures, where half of these get low amount of watering, and the other half receive a high amount of watering. Another six plants are exposed to a hot temperature. In total, this experiment involves 18 individual plants. For this type of study design, a between-between ANOVA is appropriate because the two factors are based on independent measurements. We'll now have a look at an experimental design that is appropriate for a mixed two-way ANOVA. It is called mixed because it includes factors that involve both repeated and independent measurements. In this example, we have three different treatments, where each treatment group includes three independent subjects. In total, the study therefore involves nine subjects. The tumor size is initially measured after one week of treatment. The tumor size is then measured on the same individuals after two weeks of treatment, and then again after three weeks of treatment. The tumor size is therefore repeatedly measured over time in the nine subjects. Since the factor time involves repeated measurements, whereas the treatment involves independent measurements, a mixed two-way ANOVA is therefore appropriate to use for this type of study design. Here is another example of a mixed design where nine independent plants are exposed to different temperatures. The height of each plant is measured at the start of the study. The height of the same plants is then measured after being exposed to different temperatures for two weeks and then again after three weeks. This is a mixed design because the temperature is based on measurements on independent plants, whereas time involves repeated measures of the same plants. Finally, we will have a look at the within-within ANOVA, which is appropriate to use if both factors involve repeated measurements. In this example, only three subjects are included. Pieces of the tumor from each of the three subjects are isolated and grown in three different cultures. The tumors are either unexposed or exposed to drug A or B. The tumor size in the cultures is initially measured after one week. The same tumors in the cultures are then measured after two weeks of treatment, and then again after four weeks of treatment. Since the treatment involves measurements based on the tumor from the same individual, these measures can be considered as repeated measurements. Also, the cultures are repeatedly measured over time. Since both factors involve repeated measurements, a within-within ANOVA is appropriate to use. To summarize, the type of ANOVA you should use depends on your experimental design. We'll now briefly discuss type 1, 2 and 3 models. All our previous examples have been balanced since they included the same number of data points in each group. However, in this example, the data is unbalanced, which might be due to the study design or missing observations. For example, we see that five plants have been exposed to a low amount of watering at a warm temperature whereas only two plants were exposed to a high amount of watering at the same temperature. Since the number of observations is not equal in all groups, this is an unbalanced data set. When the data is unbalanced, there are three different approaches or models to calculate the sum of squares for the ANOVA. If you use a type 1 model and a between-between two-way ANOVA on an unbalanced data set, will get a different sum of squares depending on the order of the factors in our model. These two models include the same factors, watering and temperature, as well as an interaction term. However, in the first model, watering is defined before the factor temperature, whereas watering is defined after the temperature in the second model. If you use a type 1 model and a between-between two-way ANOVA on an unbalanced data set, 
will get different sum of squares depending on the order of the factors in our model. In this model, the factor water is before the temperature factor. And in this model, the factor temperature comes before the watering factor. The two models result in different sum of squares and consequently different F ratios and p-values. For type 2 models, the sum of squares is calculated for factor A in the presence of factor B. And the sum of squares for factor B is then calculated in the presence of factor A. The calculations for a type 2 model is therefore the same as running different orders of the factors from a type 1 model and then collect the results from the second factor of the two different models. In summary, in a type 1 model, the factors are tested in the order they appear in the model. For example, the sum of squares is first calculated for factor A, and the sum of squares of factor B is then calculated in the presence of factor A. The sum of squares for the interaction term is then calculated in the presence of both A and B. In type 2 models, the factors are tested in the presence of each other but without the interaction term. The sum of squares for factor A is calculated in the presence of factor B, and the sum of squares for factor B is calculated in the presence of factor A. In type 3 models, the factors are tested in the presence of each other, just as they are in type 2 models, but in the presence of also the interaction term. Since type 1 models will give different results depending on the order of the factors, one usually selects either a type 2 or a 3 model. If the interaction term is not significant, a type 2 model is then commonly used since it then has a higher power than a type 3 model. If the interaction term is significant, a type 3 model is commonly used. For example, a type 3 model is the default option in SPSS. For example, if you run a two-way ANOVA in SPSS, the ANOVA table will show which type of model that has been used to calculate the sum of squares. In the next lecture, we will have a look at how to calculate the two-way ANOVA by hand so that you understand how an ANOVA table is generated. See you in the next lecture.